One of the biggest mistakes we see people make is taking steps to reduce their stomach acid because they think their body is making too much. You know, there's a reason that the body makes stomach acid and yet the pharmaceutical companies tell us it's a great idea to, to turn it off. You know, Mother Nature was probably just making mistakes, she probably wasn't paying attention, let's just shut it down. So in this video, you're going to see why the signs that make you think that there's too much stomach acid are actually telling you that you're not making enough. This might freak you out just a little bit. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. So in the comments section below, let us know what symptoms you're dealing with that make you think that there's too much stomach acid going on there. When we talk about signs of too much stomach acid, the first one we really need to go over is acid reflux. Because when we eat food, our body makes hydrochloric acid or HCL. This is what stomach acid is. And the body makes this to help us begin to break our food down. Now, the perception is that, oh, I ate some food and now I'm getting this heartburn. I, I get this reflux, the acid's coming back up, it's really burning me, I don't like it. It's not cool, I'm not okay with it. It's very painful, and so I don't want that. But the perception is that since acid is coming up, the body is making too much acid and the excess acid is coming up and burning us. So we take these medications that turn off that acid, that symptom is gone, they're like, oh wow, that really fixed it. I was making too much acid because I shut it off and now all those symptoms are gone. Here's the problem. What you're shutting off is the ability for you to digest your food. Without that stomach acid, you can't break the food down properly and you can't pull the nutrients out of that food. That's a real problem. That's kind of why we eat food, to get the nutrients out of the food. So here's what happens. When we eat food and our stomachs make hydrochloric acid, when the stomach becomes acidic enough, it triggers what's called the lower esophageal sphincter. So this is basically like a little valve at the bottom of the esophagus that opens up so food can come in and then once the food is acidifying properly, it closes so that food doesn't come back up and burn us. The problem is this LES, as it's called, is triggered by stomach acid. So if someone is making a very small amount of stomach acid, but it's not enough to trigger that valve to close, the small amount of acid that we have comes back up and it, it burns us. But when a person can make enough stomach acid to acidify the stomach correctly, it triggers that valve to close and then we don't get acid anymore. There's no more reflux. So you can see the problem is not that a person is making too much stomach acid. If a person is making too much acid, it wouldn't come up because the valve would be triggered to close. Now, it's possible for someone to have a hiatal hernia that's blocking that from closing, but for most people, it's just a lack of stomach acid. So if you're dealing with acid reflux, there's other complications that can contribute to this, and we'll put a link in the description below this video so we can fully explain acid reflux to you there. But for most people, when they increase the amount of stomach acid that's there, it'll close that valve and the reflux will stop. The next signs we need to talk about are bloating and indigestion. This often makes people think like, oh, I have too much acid here. But when you look at the word indigestion, it means a lack of digestion. So if the body is using hydrochloric acid to break our food down and create that digestion, then a lack of stomach acid would be what creates indigestion, a lack of digestion. So when food is not properly acidified in the stomach, the body still has to figure out how to break it down at least a little bit to get some of the nutrients out of there. And it does this by that food rotting and fermenting. And this rotting and fermenting process creates gases and toxins. And these gases will start to expand our stomach or, or, in, or our intestinal tract. And it creates this expansion of gas, which creates this bloating and, and this process of indigestion. When the food doesn't break down properly, it'll kind of sit there for a long time because this rotting and fermenting process takes a lot longer than breaking it down with enough HCL. So that indigestion, or if you feel like, oh man, my food just kind of sits there like a rock in my stomach for six hours, that's because there's not enough stomach acid there to break it down properly. Now this problem can be magnified if someone has some type of bacterial or, or fungal overgrowth in the stomach or the intestinal tract. The problem is most of these bad guys get in the stomach because there's not enough stomach acid to kill them. 
And the stomach acid is the main barrier for the body. So we explain this a little bit more in our video on why you need stomach acid. And we'll put a link in that description below the video as well for that video, because that can be really important to understand that the HCL is the main barrier for the whole body. And when you turn off stomach acid, you're letting the front door open. You're letting all the bad guys come in. And the problem is some type of bacterial overgrowth can often create a lot of alkaline waste. The waste product that they put out is alkaline, which can further neutralize the small amount of stomach acid that you have and reduce your ability to digest your food even more. Also, this waste that they're putting out can create more gases and toxins and more pressure and, and more indigestion. So you can see that this can be magnified if there's an overgrowth there. The problem is that most people who do have an overgrowth got that because they didn't have enough stomach acid. Now some confusion can come in because some people will see relief when they take some type of chalky antacid type of thing that, that turns off stomach acid. And like, oh, I took that and I felt better, so that must have been the problem. I must have had too much acid. But what's going on is that the small amount of acid that you are making is mixing with the alkaline waste product from this bacteria and it's kind of like mixing stomach acid with baking soda and it's creating like a fizzy mess in your stomach where it shouldn't be. And that fizzy mess can create more gas and pressure and, and make us feel more bloated and nauseated and all these problems that come with that. So when you turn off the stomach acid, you don't get that chemical reaction between the acid and the alkaline. That reaction stops and then a person can feel better. They, they haven't fixed the problem. They're not digesting their food better. They just removed that symptom. So you can see how this could create some confusion, but what we see is if you can take steps to either restore proper stomach acid function and or wipe out any bacterial overgrowth there that's making things too alkaline, then a person removes those symptoms as well. And this way, they actually get to digest their food and pull the nutrients out of that food. Now to help you figure out if, if am I having a low stomach acid issue and, and if other aspects of digestion are working correctly, we have a totally free online digestion course and we'll put the link to that totally free course in the description below as well. And that course will walk you through the steps of figuring out are there aspects of digestion that aren't working and if so, what steps can I take to improve those. We'll also put a link to a video below for understanding digestive troubles, and that'll give you some more indications of, of other aspects of digestion that might be going wrong. For now, watch our video on why you need stomach acid to understand a little bit more troubles that can come when there's not enough stomach acid going on. I can't wait to hear about your results.